Hi. I was about to go to bed, but I saw that uh, Lex Updog has posted her final, I guess, response to the whole Super Mega situation. And I figure that since I've done a lot of coverage on it, do a final kind of wrap up video for the Clips channel. So, my sleepless friends, here we go. As always, if you don't know anything about this situation, I have past videos summarizing what went down. So yeah, check those out if you have no clue what I'm talking about. So the chat's empty. <laughs> And um, a response was posted in the description of her original video, which has now been unlisted. Comments have also been disabled, and uh, yeah, here we go. Edit. If you're reading this, this is now unlisted, because it no longer needs to be up as it has served its purpose, which was 1. Getting my message to people that mattered to me after a long time of not being okay, and 2. The ability to talk about what had ultimately led to me being emotionally devastated for a very long time, affecting many important aspects of my life. Hence, part of why I spoke about the aftermath of the assault so much. When I was assaulted before I was 17, I wasn't believed by my close friends, so being believed by them is the most precious thing I could ask for. I felt so relieved being able to know that people now knew why I wasn't acting like myself. I'm so so thankful to be believed by so many despite me going on for too long about too many different things. My perspective was that if I talked about so many things that no one could say something like, Lex made this up because too many things happened that I couldn't have even dreamt of making it up, rather than just being really vague about what happened. I do want to say that I believe her when she says this. In her original video, something that kind of threw me off was that she would actually kind of contradict herself sometimes and would say information that definitely you know didn't help her case which to me did speak to the fact that she was at the very least being honest with how she felt or that she was trying to just relay everything that came to mind that or she just smokes too much weed <laughs> You know, it definitely didn't come off to me as calculated from her side. But it does have to be mentioned that her going on her boyfriend's stream after her video was released, seemingly celebrating Super Mega's downfall, does kind of undermine if being believed and giving out her message was the only thing motivating her video, and whether she did actually want to do damage to the Super Mega brand. In doing that, I made my story hard to understand for many, giving people who had no reason to be charitable a reason to outright disbelieve me. It also doesn't help that I have had an individual around me who has made this worse for me by taking trust in them for granted, by using it as a platform to say a lot of really not okay things while I was out seeing a movie. Um, the individual that she's talking about taking advantage of her situation and using it as a platform to say a bunch of, you know, not okay things, whatever, that does seem to be confirmably latent. Because in Morgpie's stream and in Rav's stream, Lex was in the chat messaging and she claims that when this person made their claims she was out seeing a movie and as far as I'm aware she wasn't in Layden's chat okay so yeah I would have never talked if I knew something like that would happen because it has seriously made me regret saying anything despite the relief I felt prior. I genuinely didn't expect this to get as big as it did and so this is also why I'm unlisting the video as well. I very rarely upload to this channel, check the other uploads. I used it like a time capsule and place I upload long messages like life updates to archive them. And didn't, still don't to be honest, really know how the YouTube algorithm works to know it would have blown up like it did. Being more familiar with the site now, I would have left it without my comments and unlisted from the very beginning if I were more familiar with the website than I was before uploading this. I linked this video to my smaller Twitter account closer tied with Dawn versus all my social media thinking that people on my Twitter were pretty much the main people that would have seen it, maybe even less. If you compare the views to my other videos, you can see why I thought this. I do feel like she actually did originally envision only a couple, maybe a hundred people watching her video. However, it obviously should be noted that she apparently approved of Nick Is Not Green's video being released. Not that she asked him to make it, but that when Nick offered to make a video about it, she seemed to be okay with it. When Lex was preparing her story, I was given permission by her to cover it. It was never something that I suggested to Lex, but when she mentioned it, I decided to share her story because she's a friend of mine. Obviously, Lex would have understood the implication of that, that this would expose her situation to hundreds of thousands of people. And given again that her own boyfriend is also a commentator and friends and collaborators with Nick Is Not Green, she probably would have understood going into this scenario that a lot of attention would be brought to her allegations. To me, uh, her you know, claiming not to know how the YouTube algorithm works and things like that, it's a little bit hard to believe just because Again, she is dating a YouTuber. She hangs around a lot of YouTubers. 
I would imagine that her boyfriend would have overseen, you know, her uploading this. But, you know, it is totally possible that she, um, you know, was also very naive about the kind of impact and spread that this video would have. So, my intention was to get my message about Dawn immediately completed plus believed. And talking about what happened after that unfortunately led to me seeing him again which is what led to a lot of interpersonal chaos that I learned wasn't necessary explaining in detail or even at all to be believed. I've always seen online that many things can lead people to not believe victims, and I felt so scared about not being believed that I thought it was more believable to mention more things than less and hadn't considered it would have muddied the water instead. If some things I've said in this edit wasn't a tell, I've been feeling very introspective lately, and this situation's aftermath has made it obvious I have a lot to learn about in general but especially having better judgment for myself. And in that, I need to meet new people who won't take advantage of me because I can be really gullible and think that everyone has my best interests at heart, even in situations where I shouldn't, lol. I hope everyone has a nice day. If you see this and got to here, thanks so much for reading. Okay, if I'm gonna give my opinion on this, I definitely agree that it comes off like Lex is gullible, as she's saying. Though that definitely shouldn't be used as, you know, an excuse or whatever. And obviously, after the reception of her video, going on her boyfriend's stream to celebrate Super Mega's downfall, yeah, just a horrendous, um, look, right? Especially if the real intention was just to be believed, and not to damage the brand of Super Mega. I don't want to take Lex's agency away from her, okay? But maybe it's possible that uh, her boyfriend was the more antagonistic person in this situation. He has seemed eager at every, you know, opportunity to make comments about Super Mega and allude to how awful they are. I mean, there's already a bingo sheet for their apology video. Everyone's just kind of waiting to clown on them. It's pretty funny. But what are you going to do, you know? They shouldn't have done any of the things that they did. But as I've said a number of times, I could understand why he would be pissed off, given that he's dating Lex. Once again, the person who, in my opinion, has done the most damage to Lex's story aside from Leighton, is Nick is not green. Especially now, assuming that Lex didn't want this situation blown up, it seems odd that Nick would make his video, because when he decided to make his video about this situation, Lex's video had already garnered over 100,000 views, and Matt from Super Mega had already confirmed he was preparing a response. So nothing zero about Nick's video helped Lex. It amplified her message, yes, but it also included the messages of some bad actors, again, Lex is now saying bad actors, that muddied the water and raised the stakes drastically because now so many eyes were honing in on this situation that of course when Matt and Ryan have to respond, that anything that casts a doubt on any of the people involved's accounts would reflect back on Lex. Now, speaking of Lex, she doesn't specifically address, I guess, any of the claims that Matt Watson makes in his response, basically when he heavily implies she was dishonest about hearing him talk about Daniel and his suicide in a callous way, or claiming that Matt was cheating on his girlfriend. She doesn't apologize in her response, so it doesn't seem like she's admitting to have lied. Matt and Ryan aren't directly referenced in this uh, once. However, I should add that Lex and Morgpie were active in Rav's stream, which came out after Matt and Ryan's responses. This gives us a little bit of insight into their reaction, with Lex seemingly doubling down that Matt told her Super Mega was his magnum opus shortly after she described her assault to him. Morkpai also claims that Matt said a lot of little lies to discredit the people coming forward, and Lex seems to agree with that. Lex's response to why she was so cordial and nice to Matt after everything went down was to say that she just doesn't like being mean to people, and Lex still seems to feel like she was gaslit by the two, and that ultimately she was being polite to Matt and Ryan because her belongings were at their office, saying she wished that they would have just talked to her directly. While Lex and Morgpie don't seem to have stated what Matt lied about, according to them, there is one thing that Matt didn't address directly that might have informed Lex's decision to trust Leighton. That being that Leighton claimed Matt took pictures of him naked without his permission, which does seem to be joked about on the podcast episode that Matt directly references, where Leighton exposes himself to the guys. We're gonna pants you at a random time. It's a, it's a damn shame no woman- <laughs> Well, he showed us his penis, that. that is a three-hander. Yeah. Did, did he show you the penis? He, yeah, he- Leighton, that's the first one I've seen your penis. No, it's not. Layton says, no, it's not the first time you've seen my penis. He said, you filmed my penis, uh, referencing a specific time, I think after a drunk drawing, 
And Jim, and look at the way Matt is fucking looking at him. And then Jim goes, don't, don't. We can't talk about that. Yeah, but you were drunk and sleeping, so that doesn't even count. And then Ryan plays it off as a joke. Once again, combining that with the fact that Lex claims to have witnessed the super mega guys, hiding the fact that they were partying without the Leighton guy, I could understand why her and her boyfriend could have trusted Leighton, given that they were friends. I can't say the same for Nick is not green, though, who claims to have not been his friend. I was never once told by Leighton to make a video in any of the situation. I've had zero contact with him. I am not a close friend of Layden's. I've only hung out with him a couple of times and it was always in a social setting. And so yeah, that's pretty much all we've got. Uh, I might include some clips from the stream I just recorded last night. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I'm going to get some rest and uh, give your mother a hug. I look like a vampire right now. <laughs> I'm going to suck your blood. Hey, you want to go